Welcome to the Academy of Light. We are dealing with basic foundations and the importance of them being laid in our lives. And today we're de dealing with the second part of the laying on of hands. This is one of the foundations recorded in Hebrews chapter 6. And verse 2 it reads like this, And the doctrine of baptisms and of the laying on of hands. And so we're dealing with, as I said, the second part of laying on of hands. And today we're going to deal with the importance of laying on of hands for healing the sick, to impart blessing, and to impart the Holy Spirit. And so it's important we understand um, what really happens when we lay hands on someone. Through the laying on of hands, an impartation can occur. And it's important to understand this. Through the contact of hands and the spoken word, transfer can occur between two people. You know, human beings have a unique ability to bless or to curse. Words have power. And when there is a physical contact connected with those words, the whole thing is strengthened. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 tells us this, His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his hands, and there his power was hidden. So it's talking about God and how that power is hidden in his hands. And uh, we are made, you see, we are made in the image and the likeness of God. We have a mouth like God, we have hands, we have feet, we can talk, and uh, we also have some of the spiritual qualities that God has. We don't have the same level of authority, obviously, that God has, but we have some of the qualities of God at a lower level in our lives. You see, the animal kingdom does not have this, and we have power hidden in our hands and in our mouth. And when the two come together, there is a dynamic that comes into play and a transference can occur between the person laying on the hands and the person who is receiving this. The Bible tells us that we are called to bless. You see, but how do we do that? Romans chapter 12 and verse 14 says, Bless them which persecute you. Bless them and curse not. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 says, Now rend not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that you should also receive or inherit a blessing. You see, if you want the blessings of God in your life, you've got to learn to bless others. That's what it is saying. And so through the word that we speak, and through the laying on of hands, it is possible to transfer or confer a blessing or an inheritance to another person. We read in Genesis chapter 48 and verse uh, 13, it says, And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand, and brought them. He was bringing them to Jacob. And Israel, or Jacob, stretched out his hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head. You see, there was an impartation taking place. There was a conferring of a blessing and a transference from one person to another. In this case, it was from, from Jacob or Israel to his grandchildren, transferring a blessing. You see, a spiritual inheritance can be transferred from one to another, especially if that person who is transferring the blessing is about to die or pass on from this life, and he's about to be taken home, he can confer his, his inheritance or confer his mantle and many of his giftings to someone else before he dies. And this is done through the laying on of hands and the spoken word. And... Uh, so a spiritual inheritance can be transferred to another person. You see, we have to be careful 
with what we transfer and what we receive. Most Christians don't really understand the dynamic of this whole area of the laying on of hands with the spoken word. Transference occurs. And we are called to seek the highest good for every person, whether they are friends or whether they are enemies. We are called to seek the highest good for both. And we must con constantly bless both in word and in deed. You know, a lifestyle of generosity should be second nature to us. God has designed it that we, we cannot receive from him unless we have the same heart as he has. It's important to grasp that. God has so designed it that we cannot receive from him unless we have the same heart that he has. He, has, he is lavish in his giving to his children. You see, to be blessed, we must bless others. The way to keep God's supply operating or happening in our lives is to constantly give away. Did you catch that? The way to keep God's supply happening in our lives is for us to be constantly giving away. You know, I like the analogy of the hose pipe. You cannot have water flowing out of uh, this end unless it's flowing in the other. However, if you stop the flow of water at, at this end where the water comes out, you stop the flow of water at this end coming in. You just build up pressure, that's all. And, uh, you know, if it's not flowing out of this end, it can't flow into this end. This is the circle of supply. If you stop the outflow, you stop the inflow. To be blessed, we have to bless others in every aspect of life. And uh, a constant supply requires a constant outflow. So bless and you will be blessed. And we are to bless and not to judge. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 37 it says, Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. You see, you have to forgive others in order for you to have forgiveness. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So shall men give unto you. For with the same measure that you give, it shall be measured to you again. Now, it's interesting to understand this. And we need some practical guidelines for how to bless other people. There are ways to touch people and bless them. That is not obtrusive. Um, the shaking on of hands. You know, you shake someone's hands. You can bless that person. It doesn't have to be just the spoken word, it can be a word from your heart, just blessing that person silently in your heart, speaking goodness to them. You can hug a person and bless them vocally or from your heart. When you hug your friend, bless them. You know, when you put a hand on a person's shoulder, either from your heart just or with the spoken word, you need to bless them. Now, don't lay hands on people's heads. You know, the head is very, very sensitive to spiritual influence. And as a rule of thumb, it is not good. It's not best to lay hands on a person's head unless that person is being commissioned, as we talked about in the last session. You know, we have to be very, very careful and, and uh, keep your hands off people's heads. Touch their heads, touch their hands, touch their shoulder. But unless you, it's, you're in a position and you have the authority for commissioning, then you can lay hands on the person's head. You know, there's a fine line between witchcraft and godly blessings. The basis of witchcraft is control of one person over another. And, you know, you can seek to exercise that control over a person through your prayers or using words to intimidate the person. You know, asking God to make a person take a certain course in life or, 
or praying in such a way that seeks to contr control that person is witchcraft. You can pray for God's will to be done in that person's life. You can pray for God's the best in that person's life. You can pray for the perfect will of God to happen in that person's life. But you must not seek a cause to pray in a way whereby you're seeking to exercise your will over their will and impose upon them what you think. You can play blessings, goodness of God, but you have to be careful. And, uh, you know, in Mark chapter 10, and verse 16, it tells us of Jesus, he took children, and he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. We are called to bless people. And... Uh, the Bible says, bless those who curse you. When you bless someone who has cursed you, you annul the curse. You know, Matthew five forty four. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you, that you might be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he makes the sun to rise on those who are evil and those who are good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. That's his heart. We have to have the same heart. So there is conferring a blessing. It's one aspect of laying on of hands. Another aspect is in healing the sick. It says, uh, you know, you shall heal the sick. Matthew chap Mark chapter 16 and verse 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We are all called to heal the sick. We might not have a ministry of healing, but we are called to pray for people and heal the sick. You shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall begin to recover from that point on. And so we need to understand that we are called to heal the sick. Healing the sick is, is a major harvest tool. It's one of the, it will be one of the major aspects of the coming harvest. Healing of the sick. We must all learn to heal the sick. And uh, I recommend that you read um, T.L. Osborne's book. Um, you can, it's in the manual where you can go to his website and get that. But it's, it's, you need to know and understand that it is God's heart to heal the sick. And you need to understand that. You see, there's a transference again. When you lay hands on the sick, there is a transference of virtue or power um, that passes from one person to the other. This is often felt as a, a mild sensation um, of maybe burning in one's hands or a tingling in one's hands. Or you might not feel anything and yet the person is healed. And so we are called and you must you know, take opportunities and offer to pray for people who are sick. And uh, there's a, something goes for you. For in Mark chapter 5 and verse 3, a woman, in verse 30, a woman touched him. And Jesus said, and immediately knowing himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, he turned and said, who touched me? See, there's a transference takes place. And uh, we have to learn to heal the sick, to lay hands on the sick. And this is very, very important. The final aspect we're dealing with today is to impart the Holy Spirit. I have seen hundreds and hundreds of people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands. And so there's an impartation through you of the Holy Spirit to that person through the laying on of hands. Not on the head, just, just lay hands upon them and let God do the rest. Pray and release the Holy Spirit to them. And these are important aspects of the laying on of hands, you see. We, we are called to bring a, a, a living Christ to a dying world. And one of the ways we do that is through imparting to people blessing, healing, imparting the Holy Spirit and bringing life to them. And so you need to learn and take every opportunity to pray for the sick. If someone is sick, ask them if they, you, they would like you to pray for them. Just touch them on the shoulder or touch them on the arm and take, or take their hands and pray for them. Believing that there will be an impartation. You shall lay hands on the sick and from that moment on 
they shall begin to recover.